Don in London, hello. June 29th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour or both. My addictive substance, alcohol, so I'm an alcoholic in recovery. And my behaviour could be equally addictive around people, places and things. Trying to be with the right people, in the right place, doing the right things and having the right things. So trying to be perfect and very trying as an individual. Yes probably over the top a lot of the time when drinking because I was trying my best to make you like me but these days I've realized either you like me or you don't and that's the way it is based on what I do and how I behave and how I liked to be in my life so I like to be open honest and willing to change uh, work in unity service and recovery to help other people have an idea of how I got sober and what helps so, in my story, a long, long period of drinking, over decades, and I don't know when I crossed the line into 24-7 drinking, it wasn't so long ago, a few years back, but before that I suspect the first drink did do the damage, the first drink I ever took, alcoholic drink that is, which changed the way I felt, I felt better for it, fixed, took the edge off whatever was going on and so a habit formed of taking the edge off, trying to fix my feelings and eventually completely addicted to alcohol and the behaviour that went with it which was still trying to fit in but in the end I became very isolated, very alone, unable to cope with life. As a consequence I shut the door, shut the curtains, turned off the telephone, never opened the post, the envelopes and couldn't deal with anything. So what happened? Well of course homeless and all, all that goes with that. And being on the outside of society which was much preferred because I couldn't cope with being in society or being with people in the end. And it was dreadful. So these days, one day at a time, sober, trying to be open, honest and willing to live life as it is and seeking help. So I did have a moment of clarity which was I need help because it can't get any worse and I don't know how to get out of my predicament. And even then it was a very hard road. So it's not e easy to find recovery from addiction. But uh, the path does get easier as we start to learn what it is to be sober and deal with our life situation as it is today. So rather than trying to solve my whole life and what went wrong, I try and resolve and live the life I have today, as best I can, with the consequences of my drinking over the years. So I, I don't forget what happened, and I do know what can happen again if I get forgetful. So what helps me these days? Family, friends, community and a fellowship. And that fellowship is AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. So it was an inspiration to get there and to learn how to be sober and it took a long time to overcome my desire to keep on fixing myself. But I don't try and fix myself these days, I try to live life as it is and do what is suggested to me if I need help and that can be most days. So the Fellowship of AA saved my life, it certainly did and it's especially the people in it. So there is a toolkit which helps me, the 12 step program and there are people. And one thing I know is I do not represent AA at all. I represent myself and what has happened to me and what helps me on a daily basis. Every single person who goes to the fellowship of AA is unique and authentic and speaks about recovery, their experience, strength and hope where they choose to. And thank goodness they do. So this is my daily video and uh, I'm doing some joined up ones from over the years and some stuff about the fellowship toolkit which is the 12 step program so I don't represent anyone else but what's happened to me or my thoughts and for today some words from the past really choices in recovery my choices to be open honest and willing or to be closed, dishonest and un unwilling. Sounds very, very stark uh, to extremes. Progress as we let go of our addictions to control. 
the addiction of trying to control everything to be right, to be perfect to make sure that we fit in or that we get others to fit in with where we are fear we can be addicted to the fear if we don't control it and a brave face and unhelpful ego so shared truth illuminates our choices the choices of those we love responsibly we live our consequences and when I say responsibly we live our consequences if we've told the truth of what went on as best we could we are informing people of the choices that they have either to include us again or exclude us because of what we've done there is nothing worse than being told lies and exclusion of the truth is not always helpful but we don't go out to harm people when we try and find out where we stand with them we try and tell them the truth as it is as best we can and that can hurt us deeply because we are shameful of it but if we don't get over telling the truth we never will and step six which is having our defects removed on a daily basis my primary ones are fear putting on a brave face so you don't see if I'm hurt or not and my ego which covers up shame and guilt if I don't get things out in the open they can always haunt me and people can hold me to ransom in, a, in an unhelpful way which makes me follow the tune of another which is not always good so removing our blocks in step six a daily meditation to have the courage to tell the truth to those we love and those who love us when we choose silence feel anger and resentment denial blocks us deprives us and those around us of choices so if we don't tell the truth of how we are feeling why and what, what we need to do we don't work assertively or with empathy with other people having faith in truth setting everyone we love free today and I feel that is better because why would I want to keep people shackled to an idea that I'm a perfect person when I'm not or to hold them to account or hold them in a grip by not telling the truth and I feel that would be wrong it would be wrong for me and I would suffer the consequences which is always fearing being found out and these days I hope not to have to look over my shoulder and feel the paranoia of wondering if something will come out of the past which will haunt me I'd rather people knew exactly where I am today and what, what went on and today I was thinking about those things I mean is it as stark as that to be open honest and willing or to be closed dishonest and unwilling we can only work it out as we go and sometimes trying to work it out on our own will defeat us which is why we do a life story and share it with another human being to get to grips with what really went on and what we need to do to make amends so a couple of paragraphs from today what will happen to me if I tell the truth try to be open and honest as I may fear my consequences so too those who know me might fear my attempt to be truthful if I ask them what they know and ask them for the truth as they see it how will I cope with their knowledge of me and my past well surely it's better that they tell me if they feel able to well, some people aren't able to because they feel it may reveal something about them or about me or knowing something about me may make me un... I can't be with them and sometimes that's okay and the final bit I suppose for me and it, it is important I feel we can love people who have been in our lives and hate and we hated the way they behaved at the time so we maybe have ha had hateful feelings about how we were treated but somehow we still love the person and how is that how is it that we can love people and hate their behavior well just look back in your history and you'll see that you have knowing that people do their best even when it feels like the worst for us we need forgive and share our outlook or how else will we make progress progress towards truth love and wisdom today and for me you know the touchstones of truth love and wisdom knowing the truth of the whole situation not just bits of it love how to love people and be loved back and learning the wisdom most often of forgiveness 
for my my part in it and also sharing about how other people were too I'm not looking for them to forgive me but I have to know that I was doing the best I could under, under the circumstances and if that is true it is also true of other people that they were doing their best even when it felt their worst because often when we fall out of love with people or fall out of being able to cope still loving them ironically we still need forgiveness for what happened and why it happened if I choose not to tell you the truth I will never know the truth in you so those are the harsh consequences of not telling the truth if I don't tell the truth I won't get the truth back because it's an unknown so this idea of truth, love and wisdom the more we practice and make progress and share the truth in the moment the less we have to worry about the past but there is always that great big dollop of stuff which can linger inside us you know, addiction to fear is also addiction to shame and guilt and covering up or we actually express the shame and guilt of the past years and then do nothing about it except use it as a badge of what? the familiar it's easier to be fearful and live that way because that's all we've known so courage, faith and confidence which is all about step 7 in July for me courage, faith and confidence to keep on learning the truth as it is and how to let go of the shackles of the past our past lives whether it was people doing things to us or what we did to other people it has to be reconciled in some way or we always have a blockage and sometimes maybe things cannot be said but I don't know that I'm the best guide for myself in that I don't know if I have the right wisdom to be always right about me indeed most often I can be wrong because who wants to rake up the past anyway well in step four of our life and our life story we do share it with another human being and then find out where our defects of character lie often it's not about being truthful or how do we learn to be open honest and willing today well there's only one way to find out and that's to try it out with care due care and attention not only for ourselves but for other people and sharing how we're going about it with maybe another pe pe one or two people who we trust in their judgment <coughs> so life ain't easy but I tell you what it gets a lot easier if we do keep on telling the truth in the moment of now learn how to love and be loved back and continue to make progress with our wisdom and become more skillful at life it doesn't mean we will be more superior to anybody else we just get more skillful at dealing with our own situation and we try not to control anybody else's and try not to judge other people but we do need to make judgments about our own behaviour and how we are conducting ourselves very moral in a very immoral world anyway that's me for today and I am saying the serenity prayer at the end of my videos for this year I thought I'd just tack them all together but it doesn't necessarily follow well so the serenity prayer to God or to good conscience as you come to understand for yourself everything is about personal understanding and a path forwards in sobriety unique authentic to you and your life situation and your life experiences right now so the 12 step program certainly does work for everyone it works out differently in reality for each and every one of us because we are unique and authentic in where we are today so we have common ground common understanding to be open, honest and willing and see how we can live together more in peace than anything else and with some serenity about what we can and cannot do so the serenity prayer to God or in good conscience God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today Don in London, hello. June 29th, 
my daily video all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour, equally addictive, people, places, things, collecting, fixing, workaholic, relationships, always trying to fill the gap inside, always with fear, which I couldn't really identify because I didn't know who I was, didn't know what I stood for and it was difficult because I thought I could fix myself by fixing everything else and it didn't work. Drink just filled the gap and I couldn't stop. So these days I'm sober one day at a time and I share daily reflections here from AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't speak for the fellowship, never can, never will. It's full of unique authentic people who may share where they choose. So I share a message of experience, strength and hope from here, the book, and it talks for June 29, a rippling effect. Having learned to, be, having learned to live so happily, we sh we'd show everyone else how. Yes, we of AA did dream of those dreams, how natural that was, since most alcoholics are bankrupt idealists. So why shouldn't we share our way of life with everyone? The great discovery of sobriety led me to feel the need to spread the good news to the world around me, and this is what I'm doing to an extent, and this is what I need to watch out for. The grandiose thoughts of my drinking days returned. Later I learned that concentrating on my own recovery was a full-time process. As I became a sober citizen in this world, I observed a rippling effect which, without any conscious effort on my part, reached any related facility outside, re related facility or outside enterprise without di diverting me from my primary purpose of staying sober and helping other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. Which is why I always say I'm one voice of many. And it's the many voices we need to hear to make our choices of how to live well in our own unique, authentic way with the life experiences that we have. And it's not idealistic. It's just trying to be practical. Take a practical look at what is in front of us and what are the best choices. And what always helps me when I'm not sure is the fellowship, people, the literature when I can't get to meetings, and the serenity prayer, which gives me guidance in the moment when there could be crisis or just nothing. And that serenity prayer goes like this, to God or good conscience, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, which are many, the courage to change the things I can, often just my choices, and the wisdom to know the difference in the moment, and always for me, just in the day. Don in London, hello. My, my, my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. And uh, it's been an appropriate day to watch a bit of news for me. And obviously with the passing of Michael Jackson, and the talk of types of medication he used. Uh, there's been lots of speculation about what does it mean for other people and of course the BBC in the UK makes it topical and uh, an expert GP comes on and an expert in rehab uh, or going to rehab or it's really about rehabilitation of our attitudes, behaviour and substances. They were talking candidly about what is addiction and it's interesting because they all agree really if you keep on using something over and over again and expect the same result it doesn't quite work that way especially with drugs and substances and behavior because the more we do it the more we have to do more of it in order to get that place of calm and peace that uh, maybe it was giving us in the first place but addicted to painkillers often with codeine in them and uh, I can't remember all the different names but ones with which are opiates as well so they have a, a risk of causing dependence. So without any sort of prompting, an ordinary person can find themselves in the throes of addiction, which will terrify most people because they don't know how to get out of it. And the good thing is that both of these experts said, best get professional help, help to help you. Find a way to use medication properly. And uh, in my case, alcohol, never again. So yes, me addicted to alcohol, and behaviour, substance and behaviour. We can all get there and we get there by different routes and what we know at the end of it is somehow we have to stop it because it's killing us and making our lives shorter. 
So I'm glad for the experts and the BBC for highlighting how easy it is for an ordinary person to suddenly find their own addiction. And uh, I think I was an ordinary person, but there was a lot of fear putting on a brave face and ego in, in the end, just trying to keep life ticking over, make it look right for other people. And what helps me most these days, uh, having had the professional help, which is ongoing in some situations, uh, is, a, is a fellowship. And the fellowship for me is Alcoholics Anonymous. And uh, sometimes I, I do look at some of the other videos on YouTube and ask myself, why, is, why are people so against it? And it's not for me to answer that question, nor prove them, prove them wrong or right. So I know, know what works for me. So if I keep with, keep with the program which works for me, then I'm better able to deal with life as, it, as I turn up, and life as it happens, and life as it can be. So the gift really is, how do we get out of the addiction? Uh, there are a multitude of ways, with professional or fellowship help. It's entirely up to the individual what is right for them and what is appropriate for them. So I neither knock a, they, well, I don't knock AA and I don't knock prof professional uh, people who can actually get people to the same place, which is not to do that addiction on a daily basis. But over and above that, when it comes to painkillers, you know, I have problems and I, I would s sincerely wish, yeah, I sincerely wish that there was a way round not having to take any sort of medication. I don't take an opiate, but you know, it's an irritation to me because it must impact on my body in some way. So my view is I'm going to go see my GP and say, listen, is there something else which is uh, less intrusive, if you like, in terms of what it might do to my thinking and feeling? It doesn't do anything at the moment, it just kills the pain because it's a sort of neuroblocker thing. Anyway, three, mi three minutes or four minutes into my video, what are these all about? How to keep in recovery? And for me, it is AA, the fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous, which helps me keep sober one day at a time. And it took me an awful lot of time to accept. I had denial first that I was an addict. Then I had to accept, admit and accept that the darn drink had got me. And it took an awful long time. Anyway, somehow I managed to get to uh, the rooms of AA. One meeting and then five years later, I thought I'd better give it a proper go. So five years in between the first and second meeting, which is not unusual. Some people go through even longer. But at the beginning of every meeting, there's a preamble said, or a statement, of what AA is and what it can do. And I cannot speak for AA, never will, never want to. But I can talk about how it helps me keep myself in the day and present and sober. I can do that. Anyway, this preamble goes like this, and uh, the statement, if you like. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And I went to a meeting of the fellowship last night and uh, somebody I know shared and they were hilarious. You know, it is hilarious when we look back. It's fearful at the time when we realise we're hooked and we can't get out of it and drink is just making life horrible. But this person, you know, it took, <laughs> they were able to share the drastic changes that are needed to stop drinking and to be included in part of something which keeps it on the sober path. And I just sat and listened. I like to absorb at meetings as much as I like to talk at meetings. So I felt the need to, to keep quiet and I could see there were a lot of people burning and wanting to, to share. So for me, it was a good meeting just to listen to other people's wisdom, experience, strength and hope. And I share on here on YouTube the Daily Reflections, which is AA literature, one page a day, to help us uh, keep sober. And it focuses us on recovery always and why we need recovery and to be aware of our attitudes and our behaviour for today. Uh, June has been all about step six, which is about defects of character, that is going to the extremes of our personality traits, of maybe fear putting on a brave face and ego. But sometimes we need those things, but not, not all the time. If we use coping strategies all the time, we have no way of dealing with the day. We're just coping. Coping, well, 
it's better to have a, a daily life plan, 24 hours long, I feel, where you can say, with some certainty, if I have the right attitude and behaviour, I can get by. And, more than that, I can actually enjoy my life experience today. So, for June 20, what date are we on? I might have given the wrong date at the beginning. Here we go. June 29th. I think I said 28th. Doesn't matter. You'll tell me. Anyway, a rippling effect in this book, Daily Reflections. Having learned to live so happily, we show every, everyone else how, yes, we of AA did dream of those dreams. How natural that was, since most alcoholics are bankrupt idealists. So why shouldn't we share our way of life with everyone? Why shouldn't we? We can share it. Doesn't mean other people need to adopt it, and here we go. The great discovery of sobriety led me to feel the need to spread the good news to the world around me. The grandiose thoughts of my drinking days returned. Later I learned that concentrating on my own recovery was a, a full-time process. As I became a sober citizen in this world, I observed a rippling effect which, without any conscious effort on my part, reached, reached any related facility or outside enterprise, without diverting me from my primary purpose of staying sober and helping other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So, you know, the ripple effect, you, a butterfly lands on the pond somewhere in China, and before you know what, there is a, a hurricane in America. Well, I suppose that's a ripple effect. But the ripple effect for me is gently knowing who I am on a daily basis and just gradually getting along. So that does me quite nicely, thank you. <coughs> and as Bill sees it, this one. I don't know if I've read it yet. Um, oh yes, two roads for the old timer. I may not have time, but I'll... Yeah, the founders of many groups ultimate, ult ultimately divide into the two classes known as elder statesmen and leading deacons. The elder statement, statesman sees the wisdom of the group's decision to run itself and holds no resentment over, over his reduced status. His judgment, fortified by considerable experience, is sound. The, de the bleeding deacon is just as surely convinced that the group cannot get along without him. He constantly connives for re-election to office and continues to be consumed with self-pity. Nearly every old-timer in our society has gone through this process in some degree. Happily, most of them survive and live to become elder statesmen. They become the real and permanent leadership of AA, which is leading by example. And uh, I've run out of time, so the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference, simply for today. Don in London, good afternoon. It's uh, 29th of June 2008, coming up to the end of the month. Still in the month of step six, which is all about defects of character. And I guess mine are more obvious to me every day around how I can react to life rather than respond to life. And I don't know, maybe I'm just human and I have all the human foibles and ways of looking at the world and getting it wrong or distorted or out of sync with where other people are. And that's true, I can get out of sync and worry and be concerned. And I remember a few weeks ago when I had a, an assessment or a psychiatric evaluation with my psychiatrist, he said to me, uh, you know, uh, your situation is what I would describe as brittle. And brittle means that it can snap, really. It can go one way or the other. And that's not because I want it to be like that. It's just the way I am presently. And brittle, I am. And I realize that now. And uh, it's been described to me as fragile as well. And uh, with a propensity to run in the wrong direction by my sister, who uh, I had a very good chat with yesterday morning. And she knows me very well. And on the one hand, I'm a stubborn son of a, son of a gun. On the other hand, I still have brittle qualities or fragile qualities, which means often I'm not sure which way to turn, which is the right way, which is the wrong way, or there is no right and wrong. I just don't know, and uh, that's where my sort of brittleness comes in. And then what do I do? I shut down and isolate, and then it makes it worse. So all I know is I learn on a daily basis it's better often to keep in company, keep on asking the right questions, not only of myself, of those around me as well and how they feel and it comes back to a bit of assertiveness and empathy a lot of the time and I'm learning this most in most instances 
where life is just going along fairly well. I can say, how am I feeling? Why? And what can I do? And uh, that's being assertive about me and my situation. But when it comes to being involved with others, and deeply involved, and connected, and understanding, and being understood, how are we feeling, why, and what can we do, is far more be is far better, far, far more is achieved in just understanding each other. And, you know, the world finds it very difficult to assert itself in the right way, or have empathy with others. And it seems often that civilization is only, I suppose, paper thin. And underneath, there are lots of cracks people are trying to paper over. And I'm no different, because wh when life feels difficult, I don't know which way to turn. And what I'm re beginning to realise... Sorry, I just saw a great big bug. What I'm beginning to realise is, I'm as human as the next person. And what I need to do is keep on asking, being involved, include, rather than exclude. Not try and sort, sort it out on my own, and make myself miser miserable, I guess. And uh, sometimes misery is easy to, easier to handle than involvement, simply because it's good to feel sorry for ourselves and wonder what to do next and just keep life very thin and superficial rather than getting to the deep of living, which is, as Freud said, to how to love and how to be loved and have something to useful to do. So I am a learner, without a doubt. It doesn't matter what age we're at. When new people come into our lives, special people, people we, we get to love, and they love us back, then we start to understand another depth that we can go to. And of course that makes us vulnerable, in my case feeling bitter or fragile, and uh, I suppose fearful of consequences of getting it wrong. And the answer is, there is no getting it wrong, we're just living life. So, you know, this has been shown to me over and over again in the last couple of days how to be, how to get on how to be in the best company and how to live uh, gently and just enjoy being and living in the moment so there we are uh, for, as from yesterday uh, vulnerable, me, absolutely fragile, me, yes and uh, long may it be so because what it means is I'm actually starting to feel depth in my life and uh, not be one-dimensional or trying to do things to a program without really living so you know we change and we mature and modify in different ways and it's good to do that just good to be moving along gently anyway uh, we're over halfway through the day and I haven't done the daily readings for today but maybe it's a sort of retro and how are things going so from this book AA's daily reflections it says a rippling effect have we, learned, have we learned to live so happily we'd show everyone else how yes we of AA did dream those dreams how natural that was since most alcoholics are bankrupt idealists so why shouldn't we share our life our way of life with everyone and that comes from the 12 steps and 12 traditions and it goes on to say the great discovery of sobriety led me to feel the need to spread the good news to the world around me the grandiose thoughts of my drinking days returned. Later, I learned that concentrating on my own recovery was a full-time process. As I became a sober citizen in this world, I observed a rippling effect which, without any conscious effort on my part, reached any related facility or outside enterprise, without diverting me from my primary purpose of staying sober and helping other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And there is a rippling effect of whether we're feeling good about life or not feeling good about life. And what I know, I and mean, I went to a superb meeting of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, just down the road from me at Eaton Square, last night at 9 o'clock till 10. And there was a lot of good sharing, sharing from people I know, sharing from strangers I've never met before, all about how to live and live in the day. And it was from birth to death, living ordinary being, and just being ordinary, and the ordinariness of life, which is extraordinary. Because actually if we live it and feel it in the moment, then we're onto a winner. And it's, again, I guess, not winning or losing, but knowing that we're on the right track, maybe. Coming on to as Bill sees it, this one. <coughs> and uh, it was very, uh, very useful for me yesterday reading that one out. It says here, meeting adversity, page 184. Our spiritual and emotional growth in AA does not depend so deeply upon success as it does upon our failures and setbacks. 
If you will bear this in mind, I think your slip will have an effect of kicking you upstairs instead of down. We AAs have no better teacher than old man adversity, except in those cases where we refuse to let him teach us. And uh, I suppose that's true of me, because, you know, gently, in the last couple of days, I've come back to a place of absolute wonderment, really, of just being me and being in a relationship. And the adversity was me trying to make it difficult for me by not actually connect connecting and sharing my concerns or, or worries. And it goes on to say, now and then all of us fall under heavy, heavy criticism. When we are angered and hurt, it's difficult not to reta retaliate in kind. Yet we can restrain ourselves and then probe our, ourselves, asking whether our critics were really right. If so, we can admit our defects to them. This usually clears the air for, for mutual understanding. Suppose our critics are being unfair, then we, try calm, we try, can try calm persuasion. If they continue to rant, it is still possible for us, in our hearts, to forgive them. Maybe a sense of humour can be as our saving grace. Thus we, we can both forgive and forget. And the answer, the answer in there for me is I was, I was forgiven for being a right pillar and uh, worrying about the wrong things at the wrong time and uh, being inward looking. So I, I feel forgiven, which is uh, it's very gratifying, I have to say, because it means life goes on and we keep on learning. And adversity is sometimes what we need most to learn most. Going on to the 24 hour day book, uh, it says here, the program of Alcoholics Anonymous involves a continuous striving for improvement. There can be no long resting period. We must try to work it, at it all the time. We must continually keep in mind that it is a program not to be measured in years, because we never fully reach our goals nor are we ever cured. Our alcoholism is only kept in abeyance by daily living of the program. It is a timeless program in every sense. We live it, live it by the day, or more precisely, moment by moment. Now, am I always striving for improvement? You bet, because uh, how badly can I get it wrong? As badly as I can on my own. And when I let the world in, and try to include it, and not try to be exclusive, and try and sort it out on my own, and let go, keep letting go, and letting life happen, then life seems to move dramatically better and I understand it, uh, the pain and the, the good parts. And at the moment, the good parts are far exceeding any sort of pain I may have been feeling because life is happening. I'm involved, included, part of, loved, cared for, all those things. And not only by one person, but many. One person counts a lot, though. Enough for now. Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time. And that's what seems to work. Live in the day, live in the moment. Find my spiritual connection to living in the, in the moment of now. Spiritual life is real life. Everything is spiritual. So all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual and what follows on one day at a time is also spiritual. I suppose really the question is for anyone, what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best? And only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them. So I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship, that fellowship is AA. And today I just want to read from this book, 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, which is the backbone I guess of much of what the fellowship is about. 12 Steps so we can live well, open, honest and willing. And the 12 Traditions in Fellowship, Unity, Service and Recovery. Sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time. So what is AA? I just share off the preamble, which is on this little card, which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do, to include people around being sober one day at a time, and living a spiritual life, knowing what our feelings are, and not drinking. 
So, what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other, that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. And what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are. So we try not to tell each other what to do. But there are some principles involved and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tradi traditions help us to find a sober life. And uh, June for me is all about step six. So I share the step and also a commentary about how it works for me. And step six, it says here, we were ready, or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. So what are defects? And what are assets? Or what are our liabilities and what are our assets? It probably boils down to, the, in the biblical sense, the seven deadly, seven deadly sins and also the seven virtues, the opposite. And if you look on the internet, you'll find many versions, and here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly. Right, so, pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities. It interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God. It has been called the sin from which all others arise. Pride is also known as vanity. So pride is the first deadly sin, or defect. Envy is the desire for others, traits, status, abilities, or situation. Gluttony, the third one, is an inordinate desire to consume more than, one, than, more than that which one requires. Lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body. Anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury. It is also known as wrath, wrath or wrath. Sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work. And the opposite, if you like, the seven contrary virtues. Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, diligence. And the country virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the, the poem, an epic poem written by Prudentius, circa 410 AD, an epic poem written. Practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins, humility against pride, kindness against envy, abstinence against gluttony, chastity against lust, patience against anger, liberality against greed and diligence against sloth. So, very black and white, you're either one or the other. But in real life, what are we? We're all of those things at different times in our lives. And although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old-fashioned, we all have some sort of traits around those issues. And the twelve steps of the fellowship try to address this in in the way I understand it, in step six and step seven. So step six is all about my defects of character and step seven is all about my shortcomings. So my defects of character are the sins and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues, short on virtue. But in there somewhere is modern life and life as it is today and the changing values of society. But around that is a personal code. So these 12 steps, principles, these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living. And how we do that is entirely up to us. 
no one's going to stop us doing it another way. And if they were trying to stop us, our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way. We get stubborn and defiant often, or I did. So, step six in the fellowship program reads as this, with a bit of commentary from me. And don't forget, this is just a personal understanding. It's your understanding in the end which counts. And where do you get your personal understanding? From life. And also listening to the many voices in society, and probably in the fellowship of AA, if you stick around long enough. So, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. This is the step that separates the men from the boys, or the women from the girls. So de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends. He goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly, step six, yes, he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly, step six, on all his, his faults, without any reservations whatever, has indeed come a long way spiritually and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator. And again, don't get hung up on creator. It's the God of your understanding, or a power greater than you, which counts in this. The common good often is used or utilized. Of course, the often disputed question of whether God can and will under certain, certain conditions Remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member. To him, this proposition will be no theory at all. It will be just about the largest fact in his life. He will usually offer his proof in a statement like this. Sure, I was beaten, absolutely licked. My own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol. Change of scene, the best efforts of family, friends, doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism. I simply couldn't stop drinking, and no human being could seem to do the job for me. But when I became willing to clean house, that's step four, and then asked a, a higher power, God as I understand him, to give me release, my obsessions to drink vanished. He was lifted right out of me. Well, it didn't quite work that way, because I was a stubborn son of a gun and I thought I knew better for a long time. But when I got to fellowship, I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said self-will will run riot and willpower will fail. And it was right. So I listened to the many voices. If God works through people, the wisdom came quick and easy for me. So I stuck around for quite a while, shivering with, with fear another one of my defects, until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people, and then I started to learn. In AA meetings all over the world, statements just like this are heard daily. It is plain for everybody to see that each sober AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession. So in a very complete and literal way, all AAs have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives, and God has pr proceeded to do exactly that. And I would add to that, as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis, and listening and learning from others how to live life beyond, beyond just stopping drinking, then my defects of character seem to diminish. Personal attitude traits don't go away completely, they just don't. But if we ask on a daily basis, at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects. When men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives, they commit a most unnatural act. Defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation, they seem bent upon self-destruction. They work against their, best, their own deepest instinct. As they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol, the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession. And uh, I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning, and as it says, humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liber liberality and diligence. So working on sober rather than working on the next drink. 
Here, their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their creator's desires to give them new life, for nature and God alike abhor suicide. But most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all. Every normal person wants, for example, to eat, to reprodu reproduce, to be somebody in society, in the society of his fellows, and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things. Indeed, God made him that way. He did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol, but he did give, him, give man instincts to help him stay alive. It is nowhere evidence, evident, at least in this life, that our Creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives. Indeed, that would be foolish to think that. So far as we know, it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives. Indeed, that would be unnatural. Since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires, it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose and that's to do with our thinking and, and our vices, I guess. When they drive us blindly, or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us, that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth, or as nature intended. That is the measure of our character defects, or if you wish, our sins. If we ask, God will certainly forgive all our derelictions, but in no case does he render us as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation. That is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves. He asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character. So indeed it is about building of character, and if we think about our youth where all our instincts and drives and desires were out of control as we came into adulthood and then we find that we had to live in a society where we had to live to the norms and of course drink is not one of them to excess and then addiction but of course every other behaviour can be in that addiction too as many have found so step six we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job in other words to find balance in our natural drives and living so that we can be included in society. This does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was. A few of them may be, but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement. And that's the game, progress not perfect because if we try to be perfect from day one we would fail we, we would be back on pride and self will the key words entirely ready underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn how many of us have this degree of readiness in an absolute sense practically nobody has it the best we can do with all honesty that, can, that we can summon is to try to have it even then the best of us will discover to our dismay that there is always a sticking point a point at which we say no I can't give this up yet and we should often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry this I will never give up such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves no matter how far we have progressed desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God or as some say nature and providence as we've got to where we are in our nature and providence that is as the world is today some who feel they have done the well may dispute this so let's try to think about it a little further practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps no one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart nor so greedy that he is labelled a thief no one wants to be angry enough to murder lustful enough to rape gluttonous enough to ruin his health no one wants to be agonised by the chronic pain of envy or to be paralysed by sloth. Of course, most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock-bottom levels. We who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves. Yet can we? After all, hasn't it been self-interest, pure and simple, that has enabled most of us to escape? 
not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway but when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects then where do we stand and this is where it's about you and your you and your understanding of life however it turns out to be what we must recognize now is that we exult in some of our defects we really love them who for example doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow or even quite a lot superior isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition to think of liking lust seems impossible but how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds and even while staying within conventional bounds many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance indeed we can talk ourselves into anything I know this, I've done it self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable in a perverse way we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority gossip barbed with our anger and I'm right, I'm smiling there because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery I mean, the simple answer is the more self-righteous we are the more we are dogmatic the more we are stubborn and defiant about something we believe there is one path and it happens to be mine and what I've learned in recovery my path if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life gossip barred with our anger a polite form of murder by character assassination has its satisfactions for us too here we are not trying to help those we criticize we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness and uh, <coughs> I know this from things which have happened today self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good but if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous am I not also being self-righteous because I'm developing the argument so sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say desist of pen and tongue because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it even though we like to do it and to an extent I can do it too even now and then I think to myself I must laugh at myself and stop it because I don't know what is right for you and if I don't know what's right for you how do I know what's right for me which is why I always say I need to keep on learning when gluttony is less than ruinous we have a milder word for that too we call it taking our comfort we live in a world riddled with envy to a greater or lesser degree everybody is infected with it from this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction else why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not rather than working for it or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it and how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on only we call it only we call that retiring consider too our talents for pr procrastination which is really sloth in five syllables nearly anyone can commit a good list of, the, of such defects as these and few of us would, be se would seriously think of giving them up at least until they cause us excessive misery and without a doubt if we go hell for leather in one direction thinking we're right and we wonder why nobody's following us we do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up but if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right or that my way or the highway is the right way then we are alone again and isolated and we may not drink but we're certainly not as sober as we could be some people of course may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them but even these people if they construct a list of still milder defects will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection we want to settle for only as much perfection as it will as will get us by in life according of course to our various 
and sundry ideas are what will get us by. So the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God, of God. Yeah, so we progress and are not perfect. We realise some of our potential, but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them. Many, many will ask at once ask, how can we accept the entire implication of step six? Why? That is perfection. This sounds like a hard question, but practically speaking, it isn't. Only step one, where we made the 100% admission, we were powerless over alcohol, can be practiced with absolute perfection. The remaining 11 steps state perfect ideals. So, perfect ideals. So, strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals. But, you know, strict adherence on a daily basis, life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways. So, defects as well as virtues will be around. There are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress. Seen in this light, step six is still difficult but not at all impossible. The only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying. And that's it. We make a beginning and keep trying. So contingent on the day we ask for help and refocus ourselves around the virtues humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence. We are on a better wicket, if you like, if you're a cricketer. If we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol, we shall need to make a brand new venture into open-mindedness. We shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction. It will seldom matter how haltingly we walk the only question will be, are we ready? So, contingent on the day we ask, are we ready to let go righteousness and every other excessive, excessive outlook or personality trait? Are we ready? And the only answer is, yes, really. Or, if, you're, if we are stubborn and, and defiant and angry, the answer may be no. So we keep on trying. Looking again at those defects we are still unwilling to give up, we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn. Perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say, this I cannot give up yet. But we should not say to ourselves that I will never give up. Let's dispose of what happen appears to be a hazardous open end we have left. It is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection. We know that some delay, however, might be pardoned. That word in the mind of a rationalising alcoholic could, con could certainly be given a long-term meaning. He could say, how very easy, sure, I'll head towards perfection, but I'm certainly not going to hurry. Maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely. Of course, this won't do. Such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalisation. At the very least, we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible. Or well, complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked or we provoke others. The moment we say no, never, our minds close against the grace of God or common sense. After all, what else would God's word be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man? We're not talking rocket science here, we're talking common sense. Delay is dangerous and rebellion may be fatal. This is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us, as nature intended, nature and providence. All these wonderful words I like because... You know, spiritual is now. Spiritual is in the moment. It's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday. Although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now. And either we accept life on life's terms, acceptance is the key always, or we get into trouble again. And it's being defiant or angry against our situation often, that life isn't giving us what we think we deserve.
So just a reminder, the contrary virtues were derived as follows. Yeah. Humility against pride. Kindness against envy. Abstinence against gluttony. Chastity against lust. Patience against anger. Liberality against greed. And diligence against sloth. And step six, the seven deadly sins or removal of them is subject to asking on a daily basis how am I going to live today how do I want to behave how do I want to be open honest and willing to change my attitude and behavior to fit my circumstances and do my feelings fit my life right now if we've been good in our step four life story and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily and also our shortcomings the virtues which is all about step seven i don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation i can have a step six day full of defects of character if i'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behavior or i can have a better day with a bit of courage faith confidence around humility kindness abstinence chastity, patience, liberality and diligence and I'm a slow learner and often have been a poor student in the past. I was criticized deeply by someone when they, I said I was a poor student in the past or I could be a poor student and it was pounced upon as a defect. It's a defect to keep on point, pointing it out. My defect would be not to say it if you get my drift so these are my views and understandings of step, step 6 and 7 so how does it work for me on a daily basis well in the morning I say how am I feeling why and what can I do if I feel ok given my current situation my feelings fit my, my experience right now then life is understandable and comprehensible I can, I can get on with it but if my feelings don't fit my current reality, my feelings are over the top in some way, in a particular direction of those defects or sins, or well my virtues are without foundation, courage, faith and confidence, over elated. I need to ask myself, why am I feeling this way? and that's not to actually analyze to death how am I feeling why and what can I do is a very great starting point I don't know how I feel right now why because I'm giving it I'm giving it set my thought what can I do consider my options today or if I wake up angry fearful resentful or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do then I need a bit more courage faith and confidence and I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being not necessarily in fellowship but somebody who I love and loves me back and that's unconditional love it's not dependent on anything else other than love to and from people who care something my father said he wished he had cherished my mother more and been less superficial and indifferent and I think that sums it up cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent and the only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people so the steps work for me daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone inclusively and not just me so I'm merely a player and I'm not the chief critic anymore, I hope. Although I will be chief critic in my own life, often, and sometimes flail at others and be critical, but it does me no good, and it does them no good. Step 6, June. Step 7, July. I can have a bit of both in each day. I can have a fairly bad start, or a fairly good start. Enough courage, faith and confidence to keep on going, or... I could have fear very facing an ego in my heart. It's as life is. And it's often better if I talk to another human being or get to a fellowship meeting 
where I can see what is working for others so I can join in and be a part of again freedom to choose life life on life's terms always a unique and authentic path for each person and in fellowship with one similarity a desire to be sober today the serenity prayer is where I finish all my videos hopefully to do with recovery without the screeching of the police cars going past on gracious me a typical London night where I live anyway serenity prayer yes I even sleep through all of that during the night often and then get told about it by my neighbours so to God or in good conscience the serenity prayer is as follows God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today